Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today I'm going to be painting over a film book cover. If you're new to my channel then you do not know but I hate film covers on books and I'm painting them over one book at a time. I've done a few of these already but this is probably my fourth one and I'm really excited about this because I went to the secondhand bookshop to scout out the area. Sometimes they have books in there with the right covers on them, sometimes they don't. This time I went in and I discovered that they had Ink Heart, which is one of my favourite books from when I was a teenager. I might have read this when I was about 15 and I absolutely fell in love with it. Just check out Brendan Fraser and look how awful this cover is. The movie was okay, I think. I can't really remember it that well except going to the cinema and seeing it. Andy Serkis, I think this was probably one of the first films he was in. I'm not sure if this is before or after Lord of the Rings. I think it's after, so yeah, he's playing playing the evil um, uh, Capricorn, I think was the baddie's name. And yeah, this is the cover and I'm gonna be painting over it. Look at that minotaur, <laughs> it's terrible. So let's begin. I'm gonna be painting over this with gouache, but I've run out of white, so that could be quite horrific as we go on with the process, but we'll see how I do. Okay, stick around and we'll do it now. Okay, and the process begins. This is always my favorite part of just covering up the awful poster-like design of the book that was originally on it. And you just see it slowly disappear here and it's great. I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm sorry, Brandon Fraser. I hope that your career takes off again. Has anybody else seen that like sad interview of him? I hate it. Can we please get Brandon Fraser more acting jobs? Apparently Hollywood won't touch him anymore because of like a few films that failed with him. And it's so sad because he was awesome in The Mummy and George of the Jungle. Remember that? That was amazing. I love that film. Anyway, slightly off topic. Um, Ink Heart is about a young girl called Maggie and her father. They basically, mm, it basically starts out as a mystery because her mother disappeared when she was a baby and you think that the mother just left or whatever but the dad, it turns out, has a power to be able to read things out of books and into books. And I really remember this book quite vividly because when I was younger I read it and thought oh my god this is amazing and it was when I was starting to find my real passion for reading and writing and this book is all about people who love books and writing and stories so it was really interesting to me because I really connected with the characters in that sense but anyway yeah it's about um, these two the daughter and the father if they read aloud from a book they bring things out of a book and or into a book. I don't know if that's a spoiler. I'm sorry if it is. But yeah, it's a really fun book and they bring out baddies and they wreak havoc on their lives and they have to try and get them back into the book and stuff like that. And the reason that they're in trouble is because one of the main big baddies from this book wants to wants the dad to read money and gold and treasure out of this book for them. Um, so they can become this rich kind of gang thing. And so what's happening is the baddie is burning all the books that he comes from so that he can't be read back into the book and it's really it goes off from there but it's great and there's even a character from Arabian Nights that comes out and he's a big part in the book and I just think it's so cool and interesting to be able to take things from different kinds of books and put them all into one story and I really love this book so I, when I saw it in the bookshop I thought I definitely have to paint it over. Okay, let's talk about the art a little bit aside from the story. I wanted to make Maggie the her the main focus of the book cover. So I wanted to see what it would be like if she was kind of floating up in this magical haze. Um, it's not very literal to what the, happens in the book, but it's kind of just a nice abstract way to indicate that she has powers or some sort of relation to her powers and her reading. I think in the book world it's always good to have a book cover that is kind of abstract and not too on the nose because if you have like oh a specific scene in your head and you recreate that on the cover it kind of it can turn people off but if you're a little bit more like cryptic in what the cover means then it's more likely to make people want to read it anyway that's what i've heard i don't know if that's necessarily 100 percent true and it's not like i'm making this cover for anybody else i'm making it for me so i wanted to make meggie and put her on the front cover i had a problem because i didn't have any white gouache 
I found this watercolour white that you have seen on my palette and I've been, I used that a little bit on top but that was a very risky business because obviously the water-based um, watercolour is going to activate the colour of the gouache underneath so it was very tricky trying to navigate that so what I did instead is I just watercolour, took watercolour paper and painted Maggie on the watercolour paper and then cut her out because then I could play with what I like doing with the paper art again around and as if this force of magic is lifting her up and things are swirling out of the book around her and I just want to give a general impression of something magical happening and her reading the book. Um, I'm, I think I made her look a little bit happier than I wanted her to look because I thought she would be fearful of this thing happening but I guess it's cute so I like it and again it's something that is going on my bookshelf so if I like it then that's kind of the whole point right and I especially enjoyed making this I wish I had just left it as it is now but then I went in with this ink pen and I regret regret this um, it works on some of the things and I did enjoy as I was doing it but then looking back on it I wish I hadn't done it because it kind of looked nicer I believe with this lineless style and then I just kept adding stuff for some reason because the whole point of when you're an artist is to know when to stop and I just obviously didn't here. I think because this book cover was probably the quickest one I've done I felt like inadequate and that I had to keep adding things to it and no just stop even if it takes even if it didn't take as much time as the other one I should have just known um, you can see here me correcting this mistake of putting the ink down over this yellow bit and it's smudging everywhere because it's mixing with the paint and this was a little bit of a panic stage but don't worry guys spoiler alert I do fix it so it's all fine I really like the white streaks of kind of smokiness going across the page as well as if the power that's being created here is so forceful that smoke and ash is billowing across the page. I quite like that idea and I think it really fits. You probably can't see this very well but I took the papers of the book that she's reading and then I, on the right I cut out pages and then I bent them around as if the pages are billowing and you can't really see it very well but it's a nice little de detail that I liked doing. I added obviously a few blingy stars just to bring the piece together because I always like doing that, filling up the blank page a little bit. And I really like this piece overall. Obviously, if I was doing a straight illustration and not painting over a book, it would, might be a little bit better because it is quite difficult to do this. I don't know if anybody has tried it yet. I get a lot of people saying, I'm gonna do it. And I'm like, yes, do it, I wanna see. Um, but I haven't been shown anybody's stuff. So if you've done it, please let me see it. I would love to share it with everyone and have a look. But yeah, this is kind of the completed piece and I really do like the way it turned out. As I said, it was probably one of the quickest paint overs that I've done, which quite surprised me. I do like the overall composition of the piece and the colours and I think everything works very well. There's a few little mistakes that I just created but that's what I do. I kind of, when I start making artwork, I kind of just go full force into it and if I make a mistake, I regret it but then I, I'm like okay whatever I'm kind of very soft on myself when it comes to that I'm like yep yeah, that's fine I've learned from that don't do that again so yeah I overall it's cool and I think it's really cool looking at the cover and then seeing the book inside it always makes me feel really happy and I definitely prefer this cover to that movie cover not only because it was a movie cover, but this one in particular was a really awful movie cover. Um, I remember the movie not being too bad, so go watch that if you want to. They never made the other two. This is also a first book in the trilogy, by the way, so if you guys ever want to read them, they are really good. And they're kind of middle grade, I think, young adult, middle grade, more middle grade, but they're great, they're fun stories, and they're really interesting, so go pick up a copy guys and that is the final product i'm really happy with the result like i said and if you like this then please give it a thumbs up and stick around for more content and i will see you next time guys bye i just like to give a shout out to all my patrons they are babbit cecile james lee and steph megan tim and tom Thanks for being my patrons guys and if you'd like a shout out at the end of my video then check out my patron down below. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Bye!